Hello and welcome to week 8 of NFL predictions. My name is Seidel and I'm going to be going over each game this week and predicting who wins and who loses. I went 11-2 and two last week with my predictions, but there are a lot of big games this week, so let's get right into the first one, starting with the 1-6 Falcons versus the 3-4 Carolina Panthers. Now, the Falcons had a last-second loss to the Lions as time expired, 23-22. And the Panthers also had a close loss to the Saints, 27-24. to Now, the Falcons' offense has been pretty good this year, but I think it's their defense that's really been holding them back. They've allowed 350 passing yards on average a game and 29 points on average a game. But the Panthers' defense has been pretty solid, only allowing 230 passing yards and 120 rushing yards on average a game. But Matt Ryan has been having a pretty good year with 2,200 yards and 12 touchdowns. Also, we had 300 plus yards and a touchdown in their in their game against the Lions. Now, Teddy Bridgewater is also having a pretty good year, but he has thrown five interceptions. He did have a great game last week, though, with 200 plus yards and two touchdowns. Uh, I think if the Falcons' defense can hold the Panthers' offense to under 220 passing yards this game, I think they have a good shot at winning it, and I think they are able to do that. I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to say Falcons win 26 to 24 over the Panthers. Now we have the 2 and 4 Patriots facing the 5 and 2 Bills and the Patriots had a blowout loss last week to the 49ers 33 to 6 and the Bills had a bit of a scare against the Jets 18 to 10. Now Cam Newton is not having the best year. He's had two touchdowns with seven interceptions, also under 1000 yards passing, but he has rushed for five touchdowns and 240 yards. On the other hand, Josh Allen is having a great year with 16 touchdowns and 2000 plus yards. And the Patriots defense has been pretty solid this year, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I'm going to say the Bills win 24-20 to in a fairly close game, but I'm going to go with the Bills over the Patriots. And now we have the 5-1 Titans facing the 1-5-1 Bengals. And the Titans had their first loss of the year last week against the Steelers, almost had a comeback, but they lost in a close 27-24 to game. Bengals also had a close loss against the Browns in a shootout 37-34. to now, the Titans' offense has looked pretty much unstoppable this year, averaging 31 points a game. Their defense has also been fairly good this year, and Ryan Tannehill is also having a great year with 15 touchdowns and 2 interceptions. Joe Burrow also having a good year with 2,000-plus yards. He also had a great game last week against the Browns with 400-plus yards and 3 touchdowns. But I think the Titans bounce back from last week's loss, and I think the offense comes out ready, and I think they win 31-24 to over the Bengals. And now we have the 3-3 three and three Raiders facing the 5-2 and two Browns. The Raiders had a pretty big loss against the Buccaneers last week, 45-20. The Browns had a great win against the Bengals, though, 37-34 in a really close game. And Baker Mayfield probably had his best game of his career last week, throwing 5 touchdowns and 300 yards. Derek Carr's, Derek Carr's also having a good year with 13 touchdowns and 2 interceptions. But the Raiders' defense has been has really struggled this year averaging 32 points allowed a game. So I think the Browns continue to roll off of that win. I say they win in a close 31-30 game over the Raiders. Now we have the 4-2 Colts facing the 3-3 Lions. Now the Colts didn't have a game last week, but the Lions had a crazy 23-22 last second win against the Falcons. And Matthew Stafford has been pretty solid this year with 10 touchdowns and 4 interceptions, also 1,500 plus yards. But I think the, Col the Colts defense has been phenomenal this year with only averaging 19 points a game and 300 yards on average a game. So I think the Colts defense wins this one for them. I think they win in a close 26-20 to game over the Lions. Now we have the 1-5 Vikings taking on the 5-1 Packers. And the Vikings didn't have a game last week, but the Packers had a big win over the Houston Texans, 35-20. And the Vikings have been struggling a lot this year, but especially on defense, allowing 32 points on average a game and over 420 yards on average a game. And Kirk Cousins has also struggled at, uh, with 11 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. On the other hand, Aaron Rodgers has, have, has had a phenomenal season with 17 touchdowns and 2 interceptions. And their offense has been averaging 32 points a game. I think this is a fairly easy call. I'm going to go Packers over Vikings, 34-24. to now we have the 0-7 Jets taking on the 6-1 Kansas City Chiefs. And the Jets had a chance to get their first win of the year last week, but they ended up losing 18-10 to the Buffalo Bills. And the Chiefs had a blowout win against the Broncos, 43-16. And the Jets' offense has probably been the worst in the league, only averaging 12 points a game and 291 yards on average a game. On the other hand, the Chiefs' offense has been one of the best in the league, averaging 31 points a game and over 400 yards 
Also, Patrick Mahomes having a phenomenal season with 16 touchdowns and only one interception. On the other hand, Sam Darnold threw two interceptions in their loss last week against the Bills and has three touchdowns to six interceptions, also under 1,000 yards. I think this one is also another pretty easy call. I'm going to say 31-12, to Chiefs over the Jets. Now we have the 5-2 and two Rams taking on the 3-3 three and three Miami Dolphins. The Rams had a big win last week against the Bears, 24-10. to And the Dolphins didn't have a game last week, but their offense has been pretty good, averaging 26 points a game. And they are starting a new quarterback this week in Tua Tangavailoa over Ryan Fitzpatrick. So that'll be interesting to see. On the other hand, Jared Goff has had a pretty good year with 12 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, also 1,800 passing yards. But the Rams defense has been especially good, only allowing 17 points on average a game with 336 total yards on average a game. The Dolphins defense has also been just as good, only allowing 18 points a game and 384 yards a game. But I think I'm going to have to go with the Rams on this one. I don't know about Tua versus this Rams defense with his first start of his career. I do think Tua and the Dolphins are going to pick it up the rest of the year, but I see the Rams winning 21-17 to over the Dolphins. Now we have the 6-0 Steelers taking on the 5-1 Ravens. The Steelers won last week against the Titans 27-24, and the Ravens also won in a close game to the Eagles 30-28. Now both of these teams have had great seasons so far, but especially their defenses. Steelers only allowing 19 points a game, and the Ravens only allowing 17 points a game. Uh, the, the Steelers' offense has been averaging a little more than the than the uh, Ravens this year with 30.5 uh, points per game and the Ravens 29.8 points a game. Now, I think this is going to be the game of the week. I think this is going to be an extremely close game. Uh, Lamar Jackson's had a great season this year, 10 touchdowns, 2 interceptions, 1,100 yards, but he also leads their uh, team in rushing yards with 346 and 2 touchdowns. But I think the Steelers, with their rush game and their and their solid defense, I think they're able to just edge by the Ravens and, and pull a close 26-25 to win over the Ravens. Now we have the 2-4 and four Chargers taking on the 2-4 and four Denver Broncos. The Chargers had a big win last week against the Jaguars, 39-29. to And the Broncos had a blowout loss to the Chiefs, 43-16. to Now Justin Herbert for the Chargers has had a good year with 12 touchdowns and 3 interceptions, also 1,500 yards passing. On the other hand, Drew Locke has had 1 touchdown and 4 interceptions with 600 yards passing. Now the Chargers I think have been underrated this year. They've lost a lot of close games. Uh, On the other hand, the Broncos offense has struggled a lot this year. I think this is a pretty easy call as well. I'm going to say 26-21, to the Chargers beat the Broncos. Now we have the 4-2 Saints taking on the 5-2 Chicago Bears. The Saints had a big win uh, last week against the Panthers, 27-24, to and the Bears had a loss to the Rams, 24-10. to Now, Nick Foles for the Bears has had has struggled a little bit this year with six touchdowns and six interceptions. On the other hand, Drew Brees has had 11 touchdowns with three interceptions and 1,600 yards passing, and their offense has been one of the best in the league, averaging 30 points a game this year with 394 yards total. Their defense has struggled, though, this year with allowing 29 points a game, whereas uh, the Bears only allow 20 points on average a game with 356 yards allowed total on average a game. Now, I do think the Saints come out on top on this one. I think it's going to be an extremely close game. I think we have a lot of close games this week, but I think the Saints offense just barely edges them over the Bears this week, 24-23. to Now we have the 4-3 and 49ers taking on the 5-1 and Seahawks. The 49ers had a big win last week against the Patriots, 33-6. And the Seahawks had a close loss to the Arizona Cardinals, 37-34. Now, Russell Wilson has had a phenomenal season this year with 22 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, and 1,900 yards. And their offense has been one of the best in the league in terms of scoring with 34 points on average a game. Their defense has struggled a little bit, uh, allowing almost 500 yards a game. Whereas the 49ers defense has only allowed 319 yards a game with 19 uh, points per game. Now, I do think the Seahawks win this one just barely because of their offense. I think they win 29 to 27 over the 49ers. And now we have the 2 and 5 Cowboys taking on the 2, 4, and 1 Eagles. The Cowboys had a big loss last week against Washington, 25 to 3. And the Eagles had a close win against the Giants, 22 to 21. Now, the Cowboys' defense has been one of the worst in the league, allowing 35 points on average a game, along with 416 total yards on average a game. And now with QB's Andy Dalton and Dak Prescott out, I don't see this offense being able to put up a lot of points against the Eagles. I'm going to say the Eagles win big 30-17 over the Cowboys. 
And now we have the 5-2 and two Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the 1-6 and six Giants. The Buccaneers had a huge win last week against the Raiders, 45-20. And the Giants had a close loss to the Eagles, 22-21. And the Buccaneers' offense has been really good this year, especially Tom Brady, who had four touchdowns and 350 yards last week. And he has 18 touchdowns and four interceptions on the season, along with 1,900 passing yards. Daniel Jones has had a, has been has struggled this year with five touchdowns and seven interceptions. I don't think this is going to be a much of a close game. I'm going to say Buccaneers win 36 to 21 over the New York Giants. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to post your predictions in the comments below.